Welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you the super easy way to export your worksheet as a PDF and save it on your computer. You're working here and you want to save it as a PDF. And there you go. The complete invoice saved as a PDF, ready to be printed, ready to be sent off, ready for you to work with. And we also have a nice little window here, PDF saved to, and the location where you saved it as well as its name. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this for yourself. It requires a tiny bit of code, but you don't even have to understand it. I'm gonna show you how to change everything so it will work for you. And you can download this file on teachexcel.com. I'll put a link to it below the video. It's completely free, and it will include all of the code that I'm about to show you. If you wanna learn even more about automating Excel and streamlining your workflow, saving you hours every week, check out our full Excel courses on teachexcel.com. It'll take you from beginner to expert in no time. So let's delve into the code and now. You've got your workbook and you wanna hit Alt F11. It'll take you to a window like this. From here, you wanna to go to Insert Module. And this is where we input our code, the stuff that will actually turn that worksheet into a PDF and save it on our computer. I have already written it out over here in module one, so I'm gonna open that right now. And you can see it's a very small amount of code and you only have to change a few things. This macro is called save PDF, made by teachexcel.com, of course. And uh, let's get into it. What do you need to change? Well, the very first thing, where is the worksheet that you would like to turn into a PDF? We're gonna deal with the invoice worksheet. Name on the tab, invoice. That's all you have to change right there. Now, if you wanted it to work on whatever sheet was active or currently visible, you could replace that with this right here and set it to active sheet. I like to specify the worksheet though. So there we go, we'll leave that in. Next up, what do you want to turn into a PDF? You don't have to turn the entire worksheet into a PDF. In this case, I only want to turn the range A1 to D25 into a PDF. Change that so it works for you. I'll show you some other tricks so we can control that within the worksheet itself towards the end of this tutorial. And the next thing is the file name. But the file name also includes the location of the PDF on your computer. I have two examples here. I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this one and give it a little bit of space to compare them. All you have to do here for the file name and path variable is to specify exactly where you want to put the PDF on your computer, the name of the file, and the file extension.pdf. This is the most basic way to do it right here. However, that's not very dynamic. So I'm going to keep this here for you, but I'm going to comment it out with a single quotation mark so the code won't actually run. But now it's here as an example. When you download the file, you can uncomment it. And then if you want to use this one up here, just put a single quote here, comment that chunk out, and you're good to go. Just a little tip for keeping helpful bits of code around. Not the best for organization, but it can be really helpful. So let's go over this one right now. File name and path. A little bit more advanced. What I did is I broke it into chunks so we could more easily go over it. And the first chunk here, this workbook.path. That means that we are going to get the file path of the current workbook, the one that we are in, the one from which we are going to create a PDF. So your PDF will be saved next to this Excel file. Then we just continue to build the file path. A few things that allow us to go to the next line so we don't have to put everything on the same line. Then you'll see we continue to build the file path right there. And now this chunk right here is what's going to be the file name and extension. You can see .pdf right here, pretty easy to understand. And this guy right here. This is going to get a value from the worksheet and use it as part of the file name. It's going to get the WS worksheet right here, which is the worksheet that you set up here, invoice or active sheet or whatever worksheet you set. Then it's going to go to the range invoice ID, the named range, and get that value. So it's going to go to that worksheet, 
that cell and get that value and put it in here and use it as the name of the PDF. Going back to the worksheet, if I click away from that cell, because that was the invoice ID cell, we can go up here to the name box, click invoice ID, and we will see it is this cell right here. So that is going to be the name of the PDF that we create, AB-123. Now be very careful. This will overwrite any PDF file that has the same name in the same directory, and it will not warn you. So I hope that everybody got to this point in the tutorial, <laughs> because that can cause a lot of trouble. Let's hit Alt F11 and finish this up. Get your file name and path set up, and then it's down here. Make the PDF. Let's tidy that up just a little bit. There we go. In this section, you don't actually need to change anything from the start, but there are a few things that you can change depending on what you want to do. So here, this is the range that we are going to turn into a PDF. Now, if you wanted to turn the entire worksheet into a PDF instead of a specific range, we could go get active sheet and put it right there like that. I'm going to leave it at range. Here you can see we are making a PDF. This is the file name and path that we just created. Standard quality is fine. Ignore print areas, a very interesting one that we will cover at the very end. And then open after publish, true or false. So true, if you wanted to automatically open the PDF after it creates it, which is pretty helpful, I'd say, because then you can make sure everything looks good. But if you don't want that, just turn it to false. We'll leave it as true. Down here, we have a success message. That's a little pop-up window that you saw below the PDF. So if you have the PDF automatically open up here, then you probably do not need the success message and can close it because you're going to see the PDF. You'll know it was a success. But if you set this to false, then this message can be quite helpful. It says PDF saved to and the location where it was saved. This is the type of pop-up box. You don't need to change that. And this is the title. So what goes up here at the top of it? Now let's cover the last part for this tutorial. Ignore print areas. This is a very interesting one and it can be quite helpful. In the worksheet itself, which I will show you in just a moment, you can set what you would like to be printed. When you have really big worksheets, it's very helpful to do that so that it looks nice when it's printed out. If you set what is called a print area, which I'll show you in a moment, you can use that to create the PDF. Setting this to true ignores any print areas that were set. But if we set it to false, then it will be allowed to follow them. And change range to active sheet. So then we are going to print the entire active sheet and we are going to pay attention to print areas. Now let's go back to the worksheet, Alt F11, page layout, and here we have print area. Let us clear it. Let's go over here and add a value. Just how about value? And hit save PDF. Here's our invoice. And there we go, an extra page with the text value. That is not what we want. You don't see the button save PDF though. I'll show you that in just a moment, how we got that off automatically. Now, let's select what we want to be printed, which is just the invoice, and maybe two rows below it. Page layout, print area, set print area, click away. Just one page. Only what we wanted printed. That can be really helpful and a lot easier than changing range references up here. So all that we did to enable us to be able to control it from the worksheet was put active sheet down here because I wanted it to work on the currently active worksheet. We could also have just put WS down here because we made a worksheet reference up here. And you see WS. I don't want to get too complex with the programming though. So you can choose how you want to do that, but we are just referencing the worksheet. So WS is fine because we set it up there. And we turned true to false for ignore print areas. And remember, if the message box is annoying, remove it. I'm gonna leave it in and just put a single quote right here so it won't appear. 
Now, what did I say I'd show you? Save PDF. How do we make it so that button will not print? Well, buttons are awesome. So let's go ahead and create the button. I'll attach the macro, and then I'll show you how to make it so it won't appear. So we go to Insert, Illustrations, Shapes, Rounded Rectangle, Your Friend. We draw it, immediately start typing Save. PDF, Home Tab, Alignment, Center, Center, Font, Bold. You can spend a lot of time making it better, but now let's make it assigned to the macro. So right click. It is off the screen right now, but way at the bottom is an option, Assign Macro. Find the macro that you just created, save PDF. Hit OK. Click away. Now we have a working button. But let's make sure it never shows up in the PDF. Right click, all the way at the bottom, Format, Shape. Then we go here, Size and Properties. Properties, Parent Object, Uncheck. One final thing to remember is that you do need to save this workbook as a macro-enabled workbook. File, Save As, and choose Excel macro-enabled workbook. .xlsm. A regular workbook cannot contain a macro. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Please share it with somebody else. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, give it a thumbs up and a like. That will really, really, really help us. And don't forget that we have full Excel courses on teachxl.com. A link to those will also be below this video, and those are going to help you automate your workbook even more. Have a good one and see you next time.